This is a Sparehawk harpsichord made in Passau, Germany in the 1960s. It has a two manual keyboard and three sets of strings controlled by levers. The right hand lever turns on or off the upper manual eight foot strings. And the left hand lever turns on or off the lower manual eight foot strings. And the third set of strings is the forefoot, which sounds an octave higher than the eight-foot strings and is controlled by a knee lever under the keyboard. Once the forefoot is turned on, the upper manual can either be played without it or with it by pushing the upper manual in to couple it to the forefoot jacks. To uncouple it, pull the keyboard back out using the brackets at the ends of the keyboard, preferably with both hands at one time if you're not holding a camera. To couple the two manuals together, pull out the brass lever on the left of the keyboard. And to uncouple the keyboards, just push the lever back in. The four-foot set of strings is controlled with a lever underneath the instrument, under the keyboard. Pull down the lever so you can move it more easily with your knees. You can turn the four-foot strings off by pushing the knee lever to the right with your left knee. This is the sound of the upper and the lower eights together without the four-foot. You can change the sound of the eight-foot strings by moving the mute lever to the left. This moves a piece of felt against the strings. This is the sound of the lower eight-foot muted coupled with the upper eight-foot unmuted. And this is the sound of the lower eight-foot muted just by itself. And again, the lower eight unmuted. This is the sound of the upper eight muted. It has a more nasal quality. And again, the upper eight unmuted. To tune the instrument, you can either do it by ear, you can buy an electronic tuning device, or you can download an app onto your cell phone. I enjoy using the ClearTune app, which costs less than $5, is quite accurate, allows you to choose which temperament you prefer and what pitch to start with. For tuning, you can either use a T-hammer, like the one I'm showing here, or a gooseneck hammer. It's very important to know that you have the tuning hammer on the right pin, and the easiest way to do this is to touch the string with the tip of the hammer to hear that you have the, the correct string. Begin tuning each note by slightly lowering the pitch, then raise the pitch slightly above your target pitch and lower it back down to the desired pitch. This seems to produce a more stable tuning. My suggestion would be to use the electronic tuning device to tune an octave, say from C to C, in the middle of the instrument. Then turn off the electronic tuning device and continue tuning, listening to octaves for the rest of the instrument. Once you've tuned one complete set of strings, in this case the upper manual 8 foot, you can then tune the rest of the instrument to that set of strings, listening to just two notes at a time in unison.
After you've tuned the two 8-foot choirs together, turn off one of the 8-foots and tune the 4-foot choir to the first 8-foot. I always tune the 4-foot choir last because it seems to be the least stable and goes out of tune more quickly. To repair or regulate the harpsichord, you'll need to remove the jack rail, the long piece of wood behind the music desk. To do this, just move the flanges on either end of it out of the way and lift it up. The strings of the harpsichord are plucked by a jack. The jack consists of a stick that has a screw at the bottom to adjust its length. At the top of the jack is the plectra, which plucks the string, in this case a piece of black Delrin plastic about the thickness of a fingernail. The plectra is mounted into a piece of pivoting wood called the tongue, which has a spring at the back that pushes the tongue back into position after the string has been plucked and the jack is in rest position. Also at the top of the jack is the damper, which is a piece of felt that dampens the string when the jack is back in rest position. At the very top of the jack is an adjustment screw to move the plectra either further under the string or out from under the string. This adjustment is usually made with the jack in the harpsichord, but I have it outside so that you could see the screw more easily. Another screw on this jack allows you to move the damper up or down. There should be just enough space between the bottom of the damper and the top of the plectra to allow the plectra to move back under the string completely in rest position. The bottom screw on the jack allows you to adjust the length of the jack. If the jack is too long, the plectra won't be able to return underneath the string in rest position. Be extremely careful when turning these bottom screws because they easily break off. If there's any resistance, don't turn them. The middle jack on this harpsichord is four to four foot strings and has two adjustment screws. Since its dog leg design allows it to sit on both the upper and the lower keyboards. To remove or reinstall the 4-foot jack in this harpsichord, you'll need to push aside the 8-foot string to allow the damper of the jack to pass by. Because this harpsichord has three sets of strings, if they were all plucked at exactly the same time, it would be a very heavy action. So you want this plucking to be staggered so that you hear each string plucked individually as you push the key down very slowly. The bottom screws are turned in or out to adjust this plucking sequence. These are the basics for regulating and tuning this Sparehawk harpsichord. If you have any more questions, give me a call or send me an email and I'll be glad to try to help out.